zooming in from space as we can in Google Earth, let me point out a few landmarks. Here's the White House, Capitol Building, Washington Monument, Jefferson Memorial, Lincoln Memorial, and the Pentagon just across the Potomac. Rick Campbell has uncovered much of the underlying geometry of the city on his informative site dcsymbols.com. He sees the following diagram in the streets and interconnection of monuments. The geometry consists of a pentagram over a cube, all contained within an overarching pyramid. Each one of these shapes carries a meaning we'll be exploring. We'll see later in Egypt how the pentagram symbolizes the microcosm, which is everything in the universe, human scale or smaller. The cube is a recurrent esoteric symbol for the body that we'll be running into all over the world. I found a pair of three, four, five triangles between the cube and the pyramid. Turning off the cube layer, you see the rectangle surrounding the White House is also made up of a pair of interlocking triangles, this time with 5, 12, 13 proportions. 3, 4, 5 and 5, 12, 13 are the first two Pythagorean triplets. As you'll begin to appreciate, Pythagorean knowledge figures prominently in decoding this mystery. Where have we seen an unfinished pyramid before? On the back of the dollar bill, of course. If we illuminate the DC pyramid with the same all-seeing eye of providence, we are directed to a specific building. Is this the eye of providence we are looking at, or its older incarnation as the eye of Horus? Either way, what is behind the all-seeing eye of the sun? It's the headquarters of Scottish Freemasonry, which goes by many names, including the Supreme Council, Mother Council of the World, and House of the Temple. This building is loaded with Egyptian symbolism, with a 13-step unfinished pyramid on top, just like on the dollar bill, and two giant sphinxes flank the entrance out front. The architect John Russell Pope modeled the 1911 building after the mausoleum of Halicarnassus, now a part of Turkey. As one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, it served as tomb of King Mausolus, which is where we get the word mausoleum. The house of the temple correspondingly serves as tomb of Albert Pike, sovereign grand commander, confederate general, and the most famous Freemason of his times. Pike wrote Morals and Dogma, the handbook formerly given to new members up until 1974, which details the 33 ranks of Freemasonry. The House of the Temple is where the climax in the Lost Symbol takes place. Campbell shows how the elevation was designed ad quadratum, which is Latin for by the square. Ad quadratum is a sacred design template we'll see employed in the District of Columbia itself and at Chartres Cathedral. The sunburst above the entry is at the center of the square and the top corner marks the symbolic apex of the unfinished pyramid. The bottom corner presumably marks the crypt where Pike is interred. Scottish Freemasons are really into the number 33. There are 33 columns in the house of the temple that are 33 feet high. This is the place where a hard-working initiate can attain the highest 33rd degree from the 33 members of the Supreme Council. 33rd degree Masons are often found in positions of power. Many presidents of the United States were Freemasons. The Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania has a permanent exhibit featuring the portrait and signature of each of these presidents with a record of their Masonic careers. It is difficult to verify Masonic membership because some members do not make their involvement a matter of public record. However, each lodge keeps its own records. I find it interesting that George Washington, Harding, Eisenhower, Carter, and the younger Bush all chose to be sworn into the office of the President with a hand on this Masonic Bible dating from 1770. One has to be male and believe in a supreme being to seek membership as a Scottish Freemason. They insist their fraternity is not a religion, 
although atheists are ineligible for membership. Freemasonry is not a secret society, but members are strongly admonished under pain of death not to reveal core secrets. Much of what happens inside the House of the Temple has been pieced together by outside researchers in recent years, and this has been brought forward in Dan Brown's book, The Lost Symbol. Members can rise to the 32nd degree through hard work and study, but only those selected by the Supreme Council may attain the highest 33rd degree. Richard Hoagland and Mike Barra have dredged up the most interesting connections between the Scottish Freemasons and NASA. Here is Cape Canaveral at Kennedy Space Center. These are the two launch pads where all the Apollo and Space Shuttle missions left Earth. Here is the single runway, runway 33. Of all the vectors they could have chosen for the strip, why did NASA choose 33 degrees west of north? If that seems like circumstantial evidence to you, how about this? Here is astronaut Buzz Aldrin, 33rd degree Mason, on the moon holding the flag of the Supreme Council, which he later brought back to Earth and gave to the Supreme Commander of the House of the Temple. These examples show that the Freemasons and NASA are obsessed with this number. I'm wondering what's so special about 33? Where else does this number appear? Jesus is said to have performed 33 miracles and to have died at age 33. Perhaps this is no coincidence. The Bible says King David, father of the famous Solomon who built the first temple in Jerusalem, reigned for 33 years. In the Kabbalah, or Jewish mysticism, there are ten sephiro in the Tree of Life, plus another hidden one called Doth. Adding the twenty-two paths between sephiro brings the total up to the magic thirty-three. My theory involves the Schumann resonance. This is the frequency at which the Earth vibrates. Scientists have measured the standing wave at 7.83 hertz, with a wavelength equal to the circumference of the Earth. This inaudible low hum is due to lightning discharges in our conductive ionosphere, causing the planet to actually ring like a bell. If you do the simple calculation, which I've done here in a spreadsheet, you'll see that middle C is 33 harmonics, or 32 overtones above the Schumann resonance. Sound implausible? Think of it this way. Our bodies resonate 33 octaves above the Earth's fundamental vibration. This fits with the ancient hermetic motto, as above, so below. I find it incredible that the UN emblem divides the Earth into 33 sectors. This has to be more than coincidental. The human spinal column appropriately has 33 vertebrae if you count the fused bones in the lower spine individually. 33 might very well be built into the architecture of the universe. For further confirmation, let's take a look at the Great Seal of the United States of America as shown on the back of a $1 bill. Let's start with the obverse side of the Great Seal. That's the side with the eagle. Most important to our current line of inquiry, let's count the number of feathers on the wings. The left wing has 33 feathers, and the right wing has 32. Could these refer to the 33 harmonics or 32 overtones just discussed in relation to the Schumann resonance? I think Rick Campbell has correctly decoded the controlling geometry. Three circles with their centers on each other's circumferences form a kind of double vesica Pisces, if you will. A vesica Pisces is formed whenever two equally sized circles come together such that their centers are on each other's circumferences. A star of David emerges from the three circles' intersection points. Examining the reverse of the Great Seal, we find the same controlling geometry. Look at the letters picked out of the mottos Anuit Coptis and Novus Ordo Seclorum. Never mind right now what these mottos signify. The letters at the points of the Star of David are A, S, N, O, and M. Rearranging, we get Mason. 
So to summarize, we've seen how the house of the temple presides over a